Okay, so today we're going to be seeing how to make a fidget spinner in Blender. I'm going to be using Blender 2.83, and you can see this is the final product right here. So it's we're going to be doing the modeling, the animation, the materials, and the final exporting of the video, all in one tutorial. And I will be making the project file available to my patrons. If you want to check out my Patreon, that is in the description below. So without wasting any more time, let's do it. Okay, so the new scene open up in Blender. I'm gonna be using Blender 2.83 Alpha. Um, go ahead, delete everything in your scene and go Shift A and you can go to your mesh options, add in a circle. And then what you can do is go to your top orthographic view by hitting seven on your number pad, tab into edit mode, and then you're gonna go G, Y, and hit control. And as you move this, it'll snap to the grid and we're gonna snap it over here. So you can see here is a grid space and then here's another grid space. So right over there, you can see where I've moved it. So go back to your top view, tab out of edit mode, and we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in an empty. I'm gonna be adding in a cube empty. And what we're gonna do is go R120 and hit enter. Okay, so what we've done, if I hit N to open up my properties panel here, you can go and see under the rotation, we've rotated it on the Z value 120 degrees. Okay, so if, you, if this doesn't work, just come over here, make sure these two values are set to zero, and this one here is set to negative 120 degrees. Okay, that's awesome. Now what we're gonna do is grab this mesh object here, go to our modifiers, we're gonna add in an array. Come down here to your relative offset, make the top value zero. We want all three of these vectors here to be at zero because we're gonna be using the object offset. So click on the object offset here, click the little eyedropper, and then we're gonna select the empty over here. So what's gonna happen now, we just need to come here to our fit type and under that you'll see count. So just make that a value of three. So what's happening here, if we were to look at a fidget spinner as a circle and we divided it by three, that would give us a value of 120. So that's why we have this over here. So it's actually using our array modifier, is using this empty here as a reference. So if we um, rotate this, you can see this is what happens. So this is just a cool little way to get around. Um, if you want to, you couldn't use a mirror modifier for this. So that's why I'm showing this technique. You could use it for a lot of different things. Yeah, anyway, let's get back into this. So grab this um, circle here, tap into edit mode. We're gonna do a little bit of basic modeling here. So just select these vertices here and then go E, Y, bring them down to here and then S just to scale them. And then go Control R to add in a loop over here. Go S, Y, to scale them like that. Scale them in a bit. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just adding in some geometry here. And then just bring this up or I should say bring it along the Y value here and then go S, Y. And all we're doing here is just kind of making our fidget spinner. So you could select all of this geometry and go G, Y and move it all down if you want your fidget spinner not to be going out as much, but I'm just gonna leave mine where it is. And then grab these vertices, go E, Y, just extrude them down to here and then go S to scale them up. And what we're gonna do is come over here to our modifier, our ray modifier and just hit the little merge button here. And what we're gonna do is grab this point here and go G, Y, and just bring them till they all roughly meet. So go into your wireframe. So just bring them as close as possible, G, Y, till they kind of snap together in the middle there. Okay, and then grab these two over here, go G, Y, bring them till they're roughly touching over here. And we're just gonna keep doing this. So G, Y, bring these guys down. And we're gonna be using the weld modifier in a second. So just grab these guys. So all I'm doing is bringing these points together as close as I possibly can. G, Y, bring them together. Grab these two here. G, Y, bring them down together. And then these two. G, Y, bring them down. And then these two on the end. G, Y, just bring them in like this. And S to scale it out a bit. G, Y, just move it. So you can see what I'm doing here. We're just bringing all of these points together, roughly. And you can see if we zoom in here, they're not all touching 100%, but what we're gonna do is just add in another modifier. It's gonna be a weld modifier. If you come in here and you look at these gaps, if you come here down here to the distance and just keep increasing it till they all weld together, okay? So we added in a weld modifier. So let's just quickly um, give ourselves some more space here. Uh, closing those two. Let's tab back into edit mode. And we can just refine things a little bit. Go control R if you want, just add in some more geometry over here. And just smooth things out. 
And we are going to be adding in a subdivision surface in a bit, so if it's not looking 100% smooth, don't worry too much about it. Okay, so that's looking good. So let's just come in here, loop, select these inner vertices, and then go E, S, just to extrude them in, like this. And then we're going to go A to select all of these vertices. We're going to go G, Z, and just bring them up. Then go to our modifiers and add in a mirror modifier. And then come here, disable the X value and enable the Z value here. And you can see here, this is going to determine the thickness. If you move this up on the Z, up or down on the Z value, you can see this is the thickness of our fidget spinner. So I'm going to bring it here. And then what I'm going to do is go into solid and just select all these outer vertices. I'm holding in shift and alt to do that. So you can see all these outer vertices and then come to my mirror modifier and enable clipping. And then I'm going to go E, Z and just bring these down till they snap together. And then I'm going to go into my solid view. So here we have our fidget spinner pretty much um, starting to look like a fidget spinner. So what we can do is sh select these vertices here, shift alt, then go alt S and just s bring them out. So if you're getting this kind of thing where it looks funny, all you have to do is hit A to select all of your vertices, then go alt N, alt N, and then go recalculate outside. So now if we loop select these vertices here and we go alt S, they should scale out like this. Okay. And then we're going to go Control R to add in another loop here, and then go Alt S, and just move that out to about here. That's just going to round those edges for us. So this is really starting to look like a fidget spinner. So we can go here to our object, enable shades move, oh, enable shades move, and we can also come here to our modifiers and add in one more modifier, and that's going to be a subdivision surface. Okay, so we can see here we're having some issues over here. So let's just tab into, if, you, if you're getting these issues, all you have to do is tab into your edit mode and then select these guys here. Come this side, you select these guys here and to just keep moving them along the Y till they snap. And if that's still not working, you can just come here to your weld modifier and just increase this distance a little bit till it all snaps together. So, okay, so that's looking good. I might just tab in, hit A to select all of these vertices and go G, Z, bring them up a bit just to give this a little bit more thickness. So this is totally up to you. You get all sorts of different fidget spinners out there. So I'm gonna just go with that. That looks pretty good. And let's just do a little bit more detail here. So we're gonna select this loop in here, go E, Z, bring it down and then E, Z, bring it down till they snap together. And then we're gonna go Shift D, S to scale it in just a tiny little bit and then we go E, Z. Okay, so that's not gonna work. So we just need to come here to our mirror, just disable the clipping for a second, then go G, Z, bring that up and then enable the clipping again. So bring this guy up and then go E, S, and then E, S again, and then hit F to fill it in. And tab out of edit mode, go to object and enable shade smooth. So here we have our fidget spinner, fidget spinner taking place. I'm going to go shift A. We're going to go to our mesh options here, add in a circle, tab into, go into wireframe, then tab into edit mode, go G, Z, bring this guy up. And then go to our modifiers, add in a mirror, disable the X, enable the Z, and then we're going to go E, Z, and just um, extrude this up. And then E, S, E, S, and then F. So we should have something like this. Grab these bottom loop, um, loop of vertices and then go E, S, and E, S, and then hit F. And tab out of edit mode and then give this a subdivision surface. So let's have a look at that. Object, shade smooth. Okay, so all we have to do now is just Select all these vertices in edit mode, go G, Z, move them down till it's sitting on top of here. And you can come in here, select these loops here, hit Control B if you want to bevel them. Just move them out a bit. And grab these vertices in the middle and go G, Z, just bring them down to create this bit of a dimple over here. Like that. So that's where the finger's going to be sitting in. Okay, so maybe that's a little bit to fix. So I'll scale this down, G, Z, bring them down. Let me size it in a bit. Okay, so that is looking good. That is our fidget spinner pretty much. So what we can do now 
is once we're happy with it, we can go over here and apply the array and then apply the weld, apply the mirror modifier, and we're not gonna apply the subdivision surface. So just tab into edit mode and I might just select a vertice here, here and here and then go control L to select all of this geometry and then I'm gonna to go to my, um, click on here and make this individual origins and then I'm gonna go S to just to scale these up a little bit. Yeah, so that's looking good. So let's give this some placeholder material. So I'm gonna go new and this is gonna be applied to everything here. I'm gonna go down, go to my viewport display and just make this a temporary color so I can see it's been applied. And then I'm gonna go up, create another material, go new, go down and I'm gonna make this black. Tab into edit mode and with these guys still selected, I'm gonna assign that new material, that black material. And then I'm gonna grab this guy here, go new, go down to my viewport display on the materials and just make that a color as well. So here we have some placeholder materials or colors and let's um, grab this guy. I think we can apply this guy once we're happy with him as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply the mirror on this but not the subdivision surface. And then I'm gonna grab my fidget spinner holding in shift, I'm gonna select this guy in the middle and then I'm gonna go control um, Alt J, I think. Okay, Control J. Um, how do you join objects again? Yeah, I think I was, what did I hit? I think I hit Alt J or Control J and that just joined all of that together. So this is now all one object here. And that's our fidget spinner. We can grab this empty and go ahead X and just delete that guy. We don't need it anymore. So here we have a fidget spinner and all of these, because we have joined it to this circle here, all of these vectors here should be set to zero, but if they're not, just go Control A and just apply the rotation, okay? So that is really good. So let's, um, yeah, let's get into our animation. Okay, so let's do a bit of quick animation over here. So let's go to our end frames here. Let's make it 90. And then what we're gonna do is make sure we're on our first frame over here. And with our fidget spinner selected on frame one, we're gonna go I to insert a rotation key here. Then we're gonna drag this slider to frame 90 and then we're gonna go and rotate it first. So let's just hit N to open up our properties panel here. And let's go to item and then under the rotation here on frame 90, we wanna make the Z value here 360 and hit enter. And then hovering over it, hit I, that's gonna insert a keyframe. So now it's going from zero to 360 and this will be loopable. So let's have a look at that. Okay, but at the moment we have a Bezier curve. So if we select both of these keyframes, we hit T and we make it linear. That should be one constant linear speed. So, okay, that's looking good. Let's go Shift A, let's add in an empty. I'm gonna add in a cube. Go to my right orthographic view, select the fidget spinner, holding in Shift, select the empty here and then go Control P and go to keep transform. So now if we rotate this guy over here, I'm gonna to go to frame one and hit I to insert a rotation key. Then I'm gonna grab this guy here, go Shift D and just drag it to frame 90. Then I drag my slider in the middle somewhere. And then I'm gonna go R, Z and just rotate it off to the side a little bit and go I and insert a rotation key. So this should be loopable as well. So let's have a look at that. It's just gonna make our animation look a little bit more interesting. Okay, it looks pretty cool. So let's add in a camera. So I'm gonna go Shift A, add in a camera to my scene. Then I'm gonna go G, Y, move my camera back. Hit zero to go to my camera view. Now with my camera, if you go to my camera settings, you'll see here um, under the Y value, I've made it 1920. So that makes it a square X aspect ratio. And under my camera settings, it, the focal length is set to 50. So if you hit G in your middle mouse wheel, you can kind of pan your camera back and forth. So I'm gonna go with a view like this. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. And let's go Shift A, add in a plane, RX90, hit enter, and then S to scale it up really big. And then go G, Y, and just move it back. So we have a backdrop. Then we're gonna go to our render settings here, and we're gonna enable ambient occlusion and screen space reflections. Then we're gonna go Shift A and go to our area, add in an area light here, and then go G, Z, move this guy up. Let's go to our light settings here and I'm just gonna increase the scale to something like 10, 11 meters. And then make the strength here 800 and hit enter. Under the power and then what I'm gonna do is go to my right orthographic view, go Shift D, 
bring this light right behind this guy here and that's going to be our rim lighting and I'll make the strength on this 900 Hit enter so if I go to my camera view and I go Z and go rendered let's have a look at that okay so that's looking pretty cool so I might just grab this guy here rotate it a little bit forward and go shift D duplicate it and just rotate it to the side a little bit like that okay so that's looking really cool so now um, make sure this backdrop is big enough as well to fill the backdrop the background so now we can start adding in our materials so let's go to our shading and the first material I'm going to be um, first thing I'm going to be doing is adding a material to this backdrop here so I'm going to go new if that guy selected and then I'm going to go to my material settings here go under the surface and just make this an emission and then I'm going to make it um, just like a yellowish kind of color I kind of like that so it's just going to be a plain backdrop with no shading it's just in a mission and you can set this value here you can leave the value at one if you want so let's grab our fidget spinner here and start making the plastic material so let's have a look so I, I didn't really name things when I added them so I'm gonna look at this first material and see what that is okay so select the material that we applied to this guy here in the middle I'm gonna make it kind of like an orangey kind of material and then I'm gonna go shift a search get a noise texture we're gonna make a quick plastic here plug the color into a color into a color ramp node so search get a color ramp node and then we're going to plug the color into the factor here so we're going to go um, shift a search get a texture coordinate node take the object plug it into the vector here that's just going to tell our texture coordinate how to distribute this texture and then we're going to go shift a search click on here and type in bump and get a bump node put the bump node down here plug the normal into the normal down here and then plug the color here into the, sh the height value of the bump node and at the moment you can see it's way too intense so we're going to bring the strength down to 0.1 and then we're going to come here to the scale on our noise texture and just increase that scale quite a bit and you can mess around with the strength as well might just increase it a little bit and then come here to the roughness, bring that down to make it a little bit more reflective. And then I'm going to come to the subsurface scatter and make it 0 0.05 and hit enter. Just to give it a tiny bit of subsurface scatter and make it a little bit reddish orange over here in the subsurface color. And then what I'm going to do is going to select all of these nodes here. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go copy. Then I'm going to go to the next material here, which I believe is going to be our fidget spinner. So just delete both of these nodes here, go X and delete them and then go right click and then paste this in. And now all we have to do is come here and just change the color here. So I'm gonna go with um, something like, like this kind of blue here, it looks pretty cool. And I might come here and just bring the strength down a little bit. On the bump, shall I get something I like? Okay, that looks pretty cool. And let's go to our last material here and just select these guys X and delete and then go right click and paste them in. And that's going to be these guys over here. You can make it whatever you want. I'm just going to go with something like a black and also bring the strength down on this quite a bit. Okay, so that is looking pretty cool. I might bring the roughness up on this a little bit so it's not quite as reflective. And here we have our fidget spinners. Let's go to our layout here and let's just have a look at this animation with these materials now applied. Okay, that is looking, I'm really happy with that. So what we can do is render this out now. So I'm gonna go click on this little um, printer icon here. So if you're happy with all these camera settings, what you can do is go down to your output, click the little folder here, then go to your desktop, accept, make the file format an FFmpeg Go to your encoding and make the container here an mp4 peg. Then you're going to go render and you're going to go render animation and this will render out this animation to the folder that you've selected here. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial on a fidget spinner in Blender 2.83. Um, check out my channel, my Patreon and um, yeah, subscribe if you have not already. It means a lot and I'll see you guys for another tutorial.